فاشرف بي لاشتغال بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا دا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين له الحمد الحسن والثناء الجميل وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له يقول الحق وهو يهدي السبيل وأشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد إن شاء الله تعالى We're going to carry on the explanation of the book دفع إيهام للضراب عن آيات الكتاب written by الشيخ العلامة محمد بن محمد المختار بن عبد القادر الجكني الشنقيطي رحمه الله We took the first apparent contradictions that is put forward and we responded to it. We're now going to move on to the second one. The Sheikh, he chooses the second one from the second verse in Surah Al-Baqarah. قوله تعالى the statement of Allah لا ريب فيه There is no doubt in it. The Sheikh says هذه نكرة في سياق النفي ركبت مع لا فبنيت على الفتح والنكرة إذا كانت كذلك فهي نص في العموم كما تقرر في علم الأصول ولا هذه التي هي نص في العموم هي المعروفة عند النحويين لا التي لنفي الجنس أما لا العاملة عمل ليس فهي ظاهرة في العموم لا نص فيه The Sheikh Sheikh Muhammad Al-Amin Al-Shanqiti Rahimahu Allah Ta'ala Rahmatan Wasi'ah He comes to this verse La Rayba Fihi There is no doubt in it And he tells us that La Rayba Fihi shows generalization La Rayba Fihi There is no doubt in it whatsoever Meaning Unrestrictedly, there's no doubt in it. So the Sheikh here tells you that La Rayba Fihi is generalization. It shows what? Generalization. So inshallah ta'ala, we need to speak a bit about the generalization and have some understanding of what Umum means. And then inshallah ta'ala, we will go to the, the point. At hand, inshallah ta'ala. This concept of umum, generalization, and khusus, and, and amr, and nahi, and mutlaq, and muqayyad, and nas, and zahir, and mujmal, and mubayyan, and an nasr, they all enter the chapter of dalalat al alfaz. In other words, dalalat al alfaz is a chapter which deals with six issues, six matters. It deals with Al-Amr wa Nahyu, which is the first. Command and prohibitions. This is, the, this is the third chapter in Usul al-Fiqh. When you study books of Usul al-Fiqh, the third chapter that you come to after studying Ahkam and taking the different types of Ahkam there are, Ahkam al sharia at taklifiyya as they call it. Amma ahkam al shar'iyya al wad'iyya. And each being five types. Each are what? Five types. Al ijabu, al nadbu, al tahrimu, al karaha, and al ibaha. That is al ahkam al shar'iyya al taklifiyya. And then you have al ahkam al shar'iyya al wad'iyya. You have al sabab. You have al shart. You have al mani'. You have ada and you have um, shurut, I think. I mentioned shurut. So it's shart, sabab, mani'. And then you have ada, which is you have to give al mani'. That is al ahkam al shar'iyah al wad'iyah. That is the first chapter in Usul al fiqh. Then you go to al adilla. The adilla is the evidences. According to the Usulin, the evidences is what? Al-Kitabu, Wa-Sunnatu, Wa-Ijma'a, Wa-Al-Qiyasu Sahih. It is the Kitab, 
and then it's the sunnah, and then it's the consent, and then it's the, the analogy which is correct, where the hukum and the illa and the farah are all intact. That is called Qiyas al-Sahih. Then you come to the third chapter, which is called Dalalatul Al-Fad. Dalalatul Al-Fad means what? The indications that the word indicates. Dalala means something to show you something, to indicate something to you. So it's called a, it's called a Dalala, Dalalatul Al-Fad. And I said, how many how many points are there? The first one is Al Amr wal Nahyu. Commands and prohibitions. And then you have al-am wal khasu, generalization and specification. Third, then you have third third one you have al-mutlaq wal muqayyad, which is unrestricted and restricted. And then you have al-nasu wal zahiru. al nas means when something shows, and we're going to touch on that later, inshallah ta'ala. I'm not going to say what it means now. al nasu wal zahiru. And then you have al-mujmal wal mubayyan, which is ambiguity and clarity. And then last but not least, you have an nasu abrogation. Now, if you look at what I've just said right now, you realize that the Dalalatul Al-Fad, they indicate their meaning from what? Where have you taken the ruling from? The meaning or the wording? You took it from the wording. That's why it's called Dalalatul Al-Fad. In usul al-fiqh, you have to remember and I've said this once before, a faqih and an usuli is a person who knows when to observe the wording and to stick by the wordings and when to move away from the wordings and start to and move on to the meaning. Sah? So here, la rayba fihi, we have what is known as amar. We have an am generalization. We have something that's generalized. The Sheikh says, hadhi nakiratun fi siyakin nafi. The word for word, we need to understand what it means. First of all, now, now that you've told us Dalalatul Al-Fad is the third chapter, um, and the last chapter is the fourth chapter, is At-Ta'arud wa Tarjih in Usul Al-Fiqh. When the texts come to get against one another, how to reconcile between them. Anybody who learns Al-Ahkam and then learns the Adillah, the Kitab, what it means, what does Kitab mean, what does Sunnah mean, and the understand what Qiyas means and what is what's in a jama'ah uh, after studying what? Ahkam, what it means. Then he goes for adillah and he understands where the dalil is. And then he moves on to learning Dalalatul Al-Fad and that is the stomach, that's the backbone of Usul Al-Fiqh. Dalalatul Al-Fad. The person really understands it. And then he becomes able to go to directly to uh, At-Tarjih, wat Ta'arud. When the textual evidences seem to be coming against one another, that you're able to reconcile between them in the correct manner, then you really have a very strong understanding of Usul al-Fiqh. You have a very under strong understanding of Al-Usul al-Fiqh. But what concerns us here is Dalalatul Al-Fad. The Shaykh has said some things, so we are on the second one, which is after Al-Amr wal nahyu in Dalalatul Al-Fad is what? It is al -am, uh, it is an Am and Khas. Generalization and specification. So what is Am? And what are the forms that the Am comes in? So that's what we're going to now, we're now going to go for. So first of all, what is Aam and what does it mean? The Aam is Al-Lafdul Mustagriq. It is a word. So it's Lafd. Dalalatul Al-Fad. Lafd. It is a word. So when we say word, we took out meaning. Are you with me? In other words, I found out that this is general, not by the meaning, but the existence and the presence of this word. Well, the minute I, re I realize that this word is here, I know it's generalization now. So al-lafzul mustagriq, it is a word that encompasses لجميع ما يصلح له, it encompasses al-mustagriq means what? That word, every meaning that it can have is taken in board, on board. For example, if I use the word al-mushrik, you can't take any pagan or polytheist out of this. If I say al-muslim, if I say al-rajul, I mean all men. There's no man you can say, oh, what about a black man? I said, ar-rajulu. You can't say a white man. I said, ar-rajulu. The word is istighrar. I've chosen to... Does that make sense? Istaghrib mustaghriqu. Li jami'i ma yasluhu lahu. For everything that is befitted for it. 
very good. Duf'atan wahida, one time. Not in different stages, not gradually, but all at once. Min ghayri hasrin without any what? Hasr. When we say hasr, we're trying to get rid of adad, numbers. Numbers are restricted. Min ghayri hasrin without any restriction. Numbers are restriction. For example, if you say 10, you've restricted it. And because remember, the 10 is a lafdul mustaghriqu li jami'i ma yasluhu lahu duf'atan wahida. It is a number, but it's not min ghayri hasrin. So when you come to min ghayri hasrin, you got rid of what? Al adad, a number. Because a number is restricted. 10, 11 is outside it. Whereas an am, nothing is outside it. It encompasses everything. Very good. That's the meaning. That is the meaning. What are the way, the forms that it comes in, the siyakh? What is that? What are the ways and the forms that it comes in? We need to know. And the forms that it comes in is in seven, seven forms. If you ever hear this is general, this is general, these are the seven forms. The first one is, the first one is if it comes in the, the, the form of men, and there's three types of men. Are you with me? It comes in three forms of the men. That men can be mawsula, a connective. It can be a shartiya, conditional. Or it can be istifhamiya, uh, a question. If it comes in any of those three forms, mawsula, connective. Shartiya, conditional. Istifhamiya, which is a interrogation. Any of those three, if it comes in it, it shows generalization. And Allah, Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala, the usage he used it in the ayah. So, فَمَنْ يَعْمَلْ Anyone who does خَيْرًا a good. فَمَنْ يَعْمَلْ مِثْقَالَ ذَرَّةً It can be a mustard seed. It can be as small as, very small, a atom size. يَرَى He will see the Day of Judgment. This man is umum. Good. That is an example of when it say, مَوْصُولَةً as a shartiya, as a shartiya, is وَمَنْ يَتَّقِ اللَّهَ يَجْعَلْ لَهُ مَخْرَجًا وَيَرْزُقْهُ مِنْ حَيْثُ لَا يَحْتَسِبْ وَمَنْ يَتَّقِ اللَّهَ Anyone who is conscious of Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala, Allah will give him, give him an opening. وَمَنْ يَتَّقِ اللَّهَ Anyone who is taqwa of Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala, يَجْعَلْ لَهُ مَخْرَجًا Allah will make an opening for him. Are you with me? وَمَنْ يَتَّقِ اللَّهَ يَجْعَلْ لَهُ الله will make for him مَخْرَجًا an opening مَخْرَجًا an opening good that is men the second one is ما ما is from the words that are show generalization and it's when it's a connect ما الموصولة when it's a connective as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the ayah ما يفتح ما يفتح الله ما يفتح الله للناس من رحمة فلا ممسك لها ما يفتح الله The word here ما is a موصولة Whatever Allah تبارك وتعالى opens ما يفتح الله Whatever Allah تبارك وتعالى opens for the people then there is no one who can stop it nobody who can uh, prevent it so If Allah chooses to give so Allah says, ma yaftahila, whatever Allah opens. There's no one who can come. So whatever. That what ma here shows generalization. The third one is al ism mawsul. The one alladhi, an allati, an alladhani. And anything that comes out of those words, they show generalization. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, walladhani yaatiyaniha minkum fa'adhuhuma. The ones who come to you, minkum, those who come to you, walladani yatiyaniha. So the word walladani here shows what? It shows generalization, min al fadil umum. So we have three. The fourth one is al, the al istigraqiyah. The al which is istigraqiyah, sah? 
the al which is istighraq here that shows generalization and this it is when the word has an alif al lam in it and it shows like for instance allah says wa khuliqal insanu dha'ifa the the human was created weak al insan that means all humans were created weak so we are what we are a weak creation of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa khuliqal insanu dha'ifa also from the alif al lam shows generalization because it's called al al uh, istighraqiyah also the kul kul the word kul when you see in the arabic it shows generalization there's nobody who can say kul nafsin da'iqatul maut every soul must taste death kul nafsin da'iqatul maut every soul will taste death so this word kul here right now it shows generalization kul bid'atin dalala every innovation is misguidance kul bid'ah so there's no ifs or buts it's unrestricted very good then we have al mufradul mudaf the singular if it's attributed to a mu'arraf something that is known if it's attributed to something that is known wa in ta'uddu ni'matallahi allah is a mu'arraf it's a name that is known so you attributed this blessing to allah this shows generalization this shows it shows generalization meaning every blessings of allah wa in ta'uddu ni'matallahi ay kullu ni'matillah all of allah's blessings subhanahu wa ta'ala because it is what it is a mufrad that is a, that's attributed to a ma'rifah Allah tabarak wa ta'ala here last but not least which is the one that the sheikh mentioned now which is the indefinite now i want you to understand this one very well and that is the indefinite in the arabic language which is a nakira the nakira which is an indefinite it comes in um, three con- four con- contexts the indefinite a word that is indefinite can come in one of four contexts it can either come in the context of negation which is the one we have right now so you have an indefinite word and the context that it's in it's a negation allah is negating something or the prophet is negating something or a person is negating something but then within that, con- that context you see an indefinite word or it's e- the second one it's that it's in a context of prohibition it's in the context of a prohibition that's the second the third one is that it's in the context of interrogation so there's a negation so there's an uh, indefinite in the context of an interrogation last but not least it is a indefinite in the context of a condition so now we look at this is how you say you say nakiratun fi siyaqin nafi aw nahi aw istifham aw sharat how many four right to feed al umuma they show generalization So for example if we go and we look at it the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said la salata there is no prayer la salata there is no prayer for who liman lam yaqra bi fatihah alkitab the hadith narrated by bukhari and muslim in hadith abu huraira la salata there is no prayer what's this called negation right good la salat for who liman lam yaqra bi fatihah alkitab so we have here what what are we looking for we're looking for what we're looking for the indefinite and we're looking for the negation so who can help me find the negation 
Hey, fadl, you tell me the negation. Where, so we need two things in order to say generalization came out of it. We need a negation and we need an indefinite. So you tell me what, the, what word is the negation? What word in la salata? What is the, where is the negation? The la is mafiyah. The la is what? It's a negation. Hey, Sa'ad, tell me where is the indefinite? Very good. The salah is an indefinite because there's no alif al lam before it. If we have a negation and then comes a indefinite, what do we have here? So come, somebody comes up to you and says to you, what about salatul janaza or salatul tarawih? Do I still have to read surah al-fatiha? We'll say yes. What about sunnah? Do I still have to read fatiha? We'll say yes. Why? What's the evidence for it? La salat. Salah here shows every salah. Unrestrictedly. Whatever salah you pray, you have to read Surah Al-Fatiha. Where's your qa'ida you brought it from? The qa'ida is fi siyaqi nafi aw nahi aw istifham aw sharti tufidul umum shows generalization. Does that make sense? So, we haven't finished. So Sheikh here has this, we have this ayah in front of us now. Now we've understood umum, right? We have an understanding of what am means and the meaning of am. And we've also taken an example for each of the seerah, صح? or each of the types. How many types did we mention? We mentioned seven types. We bought how many out of uh, the men? Beautiful. And how many did we bring out in the to The nakirah? Four we bought out of it. Very good. That is very good. Now what we need to do, inshallah ta'ala, is Read what the Sheikh said. He goes, هَذِهِ نَكِرَةٌ فِي سِيَاقِ النَّفْيِ We know that now what it means. This is a nakirah, an indefinite, in the context of negation. رُكِّبَتْ مَعَلَائِن Which has been compounded of the word, the letter لَا فَبُنِيَتْ عَلَى الْفَتْحِ And then it was what? It became مَبْنِي uh, with فَتْحِ Very good. وَالنَّكِرَةُ إِذَا كَانَتْ كَذَلِكَ فَهِيَ نَصٌ فِي الْعُمُومِ Ah, oh. Sheikh is using technical terms. وَهَذِهِ عَادَةُ وَدَيْدَنَةُ This is his عَادَةُ and his دَيْدَنَةُ, the Sheikh. His norms. This is Sheikh Muhammad Amin al-Shaqiqi. You have to be... Sheikh Muhammad Amin al-Shaqiqi was an usuli, a mufassir, a faqih. He had... Allah gave him all of this. So he would, he would go into grammar when he needs to use what he wants from it. He would go into balagha, he would use what he wants from it. He'll go to Usul al-Fiqh and he would... So he might say one sentence, but for us it requires hours of explanation. So he, he says, If the indefinite is like that, like what? In the context of negation. He says, It is a nas in generalization. What does that mean, it's nas in generalization? Meaning it can't have any other meaning. It can never ever be a specification. Nas here means it is a hundred percent generalization. And this was one of the chapters I told you that we studied in Usul al-Fiqh, remember? The Laylatul al fad what did I say? Al-Amru wa-Nahyu. Al-Amru wa-Nahyu, that's the first. The second was what? Al-Amru, Al-Amu, wal khasu And then after that I said Al-Mutlaq, Wal-Muqayyad. And then after that I said Al-Nassu, Wal-Zahiru. And then after that I said Al-Mujmal, Wal-Mubayyan. And then last but not least, Al-Nasr. So Al-Nass, Wal-Zahir. He's going to bring the word Al-Zahir. This, the Nakira, this type of Nakira, which is La Raiba Fihi, it is a Nassun Fulum. Do you know what a Nass is? In the Arabic language, when Allah says in the Quran, Tilka Asharatun Kamila. Numbers are nas. Can you take ten in other, any, other, any other meaning? When Allah says this is ten and it's complete. Tilka Asharatun. This is ten Kamila complete. Can somebody come and say mm, ten? It means nine. La had a nas. That's the ten is ten. Sah? Are you with me? 
So here the Sheikh saying that the nakiratun fi siyaqi nafi ida rukibat ma'alain ha fabunit ala al-fathi fahiya nassu fi al-umumi It is a nass uh, in generalization. Where did he get this from? Kama taqarrar fi ilmu al-usuli This is how it's stated in the books of usul. So for example you go to the kitab Rawdatu al-Nadir wa Jannatu al-Munadir by Ibn Qudamat al-Maqdisi. You go to the kitab Sharhu al-Tanqih al-Fusul written by Al-Qarafi, Al-Maliki. You go to his book, himself, his book, which is his Mudakira fi Usul al-Fiqh. You will find that this is, um, this is present. This is present. But the Sheikh mentioned something else after this. Kama taqarra fi al-Usul. Wala uhad. So now, when we studied the Nakira tun fi siyaqi nafi, from what angle did we study it now? Or from what field did we go, go to it from? Usul al-Fiqh. The Sheikh now he what? He went in and from another angle. Or he now is speaking it from the grammarian's angle now. The ulama al nahw when they look at the nafi. So he said, Wala uhadihi, this la that we have in la raiba fihi. Alati hiya nasun fil umumi, this one which is a nas in generalization. This one that we have which is a nas. Hiya al ma'rufati inda nahwiyina. This type of nakira that we have with us in La Raiba Fi, which is a nas in, in Umum, it is known by the grammarians as, this is the grammarians, they call it a nafyul jinsi. They call it a la alati li nafyul jinsi. Ah, okay. So this one that we have right now, which is La Raiba Fihi. It is la anafiya is the na which is negation li nafil jinsi and it is not amma la ul amilati amala laysa and it is not the la that takes the place of laysa fayya zahirun fil umumi la nassun fihi the la anafiya which is amila tu amala laysa which is the second type. He says this one is not a nas in the umum. It's only zahir in the umum. Zahir means what? 60% <coughs> indicates it, but there's a ta'wil. It can be taken and it can also take khusus. It's not 100%. It's... That's the difference between nas and zahir. Nas has... the uh, Zahir, sorry, has the opposite of ta'wil. The ta'wil is open. They, even though the, the, the zahir is the apparent, is more clearer. Huh? Are you with me? Yeah. Like for example, if I say Ra'itul Asad, I saw a lion. Mm -hmm. The the first dahir that comes to the mind. What's the first thing that hits the mind? The lion. Actual lion, right? Yeah. But there is is there a possibility that I mean a brave person? Yeah. There is that percentage. It's very low, but the percentage is what? It's there. I saw a lion could mean a brave, courageous individual. Yeah. But the thing that hits the mind first is Qudahir. Yatabadar ula dhihni. It hits the mind first. So the la the la which is al amila to amala laysa, it is a zahirun fil umumi la nasu fi. It is not a nas in it. So let me s s simplify this. The la the ma un nafiya, I mean the la un nafiya, is of two types. Are you with me? It's of two types. The na unnafiya alati, the one which is known as linafil jinsi. Are you with me? And the second one is la al amila tu amala laysa. The la that takes the place of laysa. Are you with me? The one that is known as La Alati Linafil Jinsi according to the grammarians is what? That one it is umum is generalization. Like in its umum, how do we take it? By way of nas. Whereas 
the la which is al amila to amala laysa the la that does the job of laysa fa zahirun fil umum it just shows it by apparent but it's not a nas in it when do you, how do you distinguish between the la alati li nafi al jinsi the la which is nafi al jinsi and the la which is amila to amala laysa how do you distinguish between it? The grammarians, they set five rules, shurut, five conditions, they stipulated. Five conditions. When those five conditions are met, they said that the la here is amila to amala laysa. If not, it is, um, it is na, which is not amila to amala laysa. Now, inshallah ta'ala, I want, you want, I want you to all to do, your, to do your research. I want you to all find out what those conditions are and the way to identify one from the other. Inshallah, I'll look at it tomorrow and then I'll explain it to you all, bi al kareem tomorrow, what it is, inshallah ta'ala. Let's carry on the statement of the Shaykh. Wa alayhi and based on that. فالآية نص في نفي كل فرد من أفراد الريب عن هذا القرآن العظيم. So now that we've understood, my beloved brothers and sisters who are listening, now that we've understood that this la here, what type of la is it according to the grammarians? نا نا جميل لنفي الجنس, right? Good. And according to the Nuhat, what is it? According to the grammarians, this what is the la here? It is nafyun fi siyaqi. Is nakiratun fi siyaqi nafyi to feed al umum. It shows generalization. For them, this is am. This umum here that we have right now is what? Based on what angle do we take it? Is it from zahir or is it, or is it from the nas? Nas. nas. Since this la raib fi is nas, and there's no way out of it, how do we reconcile it with the verses which say, وَإِن كُنْتُمْ فِي رَيْبٍ مِمَّا نَزَّلْنَا عَلَىٰ عَبْدِنَا فَأْتُوا بِسُورَةٍ مِّنْ مِثْلِهِ If you are in doubt of that which we have sent down on our, our Prophet, if you are in doubt of it, and we have this ayah, لَا رَيْبَ فِيهِ Negating any doubt there could be in the strongest manner. We just said it is, nahi, is a nafyun, a negation, which is umum, we've taken it by nas, strong. So how do we reconcile it? That's what the Shaykh is trying to do here, بإذن الله الكريم. Good. فالآية نص, this ayah is a nas, في نفي كل فرد من أفراد الريب عن هذا القرآن العظيم. That this ayah is negating every single individual and every single person on the face of this earth it's removing, saying that he has, there's no doubt in the Quran regarding it. وَقَدْ جَاءَ فِي آيَاتٍ أُخَرْ But there has come other verses. مَا يَدُلُّ عَلَى وُجُودِ الرَّيْبِ فِيهِ That there are doubts in the Quran. لِبَعْضٍ مِّنَ النَّاسِ For some people. كَالْكُفَّارِ الشَّاكِينَ Like the disbelievers who have doubt. كَقَوْلِهِ تَعَالَى وَنَ اللَّهِ سِرْ وَإِن كُنْتُمْ فِي رَيْبٍ مِّمَّا نَزَّلْنَا عَلَى عَبْدِنَا وَكَقَوْلِهِ أَنَّ statement of Allah وَارْتَابَتْ قُلُوبُهُمْ فَهُمْ فِي رَيْبِهِمْ يَتَرَدَّدُونَ وَكَقَوْلِهِ أَنَّ statement of Allah بَلْ هُمْ فِي شَكٍّ يَلْعَبُونَ So these verses are stating that there is doubt. Allah says وَارْتَابَتْ قُلُوبُهُمْ Their hearts, doubt has entered it. فَهُمْ فِي رَيْبِهِمْ يَتَرَدَّدُونَ They are regurgitating inside their doubt. بَلْ هُمْ فِي شَكٍّ يَلْعَبُونَ In their doubt they are playing. So how do we reconcile between it? وَوَجْهُ الْجَمْعِ فِي ذَلِكَ The way to reconcile between that is أَنَّ الْقُرْآنَ بَالِغٌ مِنْ وُضُوحِ الْأَدِلَّةِ وَظُهُورِ الْمُعْجِزَةِ مَا يَنْفِي تَطَرُّقِ أَيِّ رَيْبٍ إِلَيْهِ وَرَيْبُ الْكُفَّارِ فِيهِ إِنَّمَا هُوَ لِعَمَى بَصَائِرِهِمْ كَمَا بَيَّنَهُ بِقَوْلِهِ تَعَالَى This Quran is the clearest and it is from the evidences which are most clear and it's miracle is the most apparent miracle and that miracle removes any doubt that may come to anybody's mind and this power and eloquence in this Quran 
But the doubt that's coming to the kuffar is not because there is doubt in the Quran. No. It's because they are blind. They're blinded from seeing the Quran. As Allah said, أَفَمَنْ يَعْلَمُ أَنَّمَا أُنْزِلَ إِلَيْكَ مِنْ رَبِّكَ الْحَقُّ كَمَنْ هُوَ أَعْمَى إِنَّمَا يَتَذَكَّرُ أُلُوا الْأَلْبَابِ أَفَمَنْ يَعْلَمُ Does he know? أَنَّمَا أُنْزِلَ إِلَيْكَ مِنْ رَبِّكَ That which has been sent down unto your Lord. الحق the truth. كَمَنْ هُوَ أَعْمَى Are they the same, the one who knows that which has been sent down and that which hasn't been sent down? So Allah referred to the one who doesn't know كَمَنْ هُوَ أَعْمَى The one who's blind. So Ibn Muhammad Amir Shaqiti says فَصَرَّحَ بِأَنَّ مَنْ لَا يَعْلَمُ أَنَّهُ الْحَقِّ So the ayah clearly states that the one who does not know the truth أَنَّ ذَلِكَ إِنَّمَا جَاءَهُ That this has come to him مِنْ قِبَلِ عَمَاهُ It has come to him from his blindness. وَمَعْلُومٌ And what is known is أَنَّ عَدَمُ رُؤْيَةِ الْأَعْمَى لِلشَّمْسِ لَا يُنَافِي كَوْنَهَا لَا رَيْبَ فِيهَا لِظُهُورِهَا And what's also known is just because a person cannot see the sun and he's blind, he can't see the sun, it doesn't negate that the sun is clear and that the sun is out and it's shining. Just because you can't see it and you're blind, the sun is still bright and the sun is, is clear. So the Sheikh, he brought the statement of the poet, إِذَا لَمْ يَكُلْ لِلْمَرْءِ عَيْنٌ صَحِيحَةٌ فَلَا غَرْوَ أَنْ يَرْتَابَ وَالصُبْحُ مُسْفِرُ That if a person has a sick eye and he's blind, he can't see, he's got, he, has, he does not have a healthy eye, then it's not shocking and it's not something to be amazed the fact that he can't see even though the sun is out. This poetry, I looked and I don't know anyone who said it. I don't know who is it attributed to. Miftah al-Ulum, Sakaki, he owns it. And also Al-Ittiba' by Ibn Abi al-Izz al-Hanafi, rahimahullah. And Al-Tarraz and others, Umdat al-Qari by Badruddin al-Aini. All of them, they bring the quote, but they don't attribute it to the Sayyah who said it. So Allah tabarak wa ta'ala knows who said it. وَأَجَابَ بَعْضُ الْعُلَمَاءِ And some of the scholars, they responded by saying, بِأَنَّ قَوْلَهُ That the statement of Allah, لَا رَيْبَ فِيهِ is a khabar. أُرِيدَ بِهِ الْإِنْشَاءُ They said, لَا رَيْبَ فِيهِ is a خَبَرِيَّةٌ لَفْضًا إِنْشَائِيَّةٌ مَعْنًا لَا رَيْبَ خَبَرٌ أُرِيدَ بِهِ الْإِنْشَاءُ It is khabar in its construction. But what is intended by it is إنشاء which is a command أي لا ترتابوا فيه Do not have doubt in the Qur'an. Do not have doubt in the Qur'an. So it's not even a statement. It's actually a command. Because you can only say to a command that it's a lie. Sorry, you can only say to a statement that it's a lie or truth. Sah. But if it's in sha', then you can't say the Qur'an didn't even state that there's no doubt in it. All it said to you is don't have doubt in it. Based on second opinion. And then the Sheikh said, لا ترتابوا فيه وعليه فلا إشكال فيه. And that, then based on the second opinion, there won't be no ambiguity or there won't be no doubt regarding it. There would be this problem. Ibn Kathir, rahimahullah, in his tafsir, he mentions a fa'idah, a benefit, which is, Some of the Qurra, from the, some of the reciters, they stop at, as he said, وَمِنَ الْقُرَّاءِ مَنْ يَقِفُ عَلَىٰ قَوْلِهِ تَعَالَىٰ That some of the Qurra, they, st they step over the verse of Allah, لَا رَيْبَ And then, وَيَبْتَدِئُ بِقَوْلِهِ تَعَالَىٰ And they start with, after that, فِيهِ هُدَى لِلْمُتَّقِينَ And this is, the, is done by Nafi' and Asim, as you would find it in Mu'jam al-Qira'at. And he says, وَالْوُقُوفُ عَلَىٰ قَوْلِهِ تَعَالَىٰ Trying to stand over لَا رَيْبَ فِيهِ Stopping there is most befitting. Is most befitting. 
أولى للآية التي ذكرها ذكرناها وهي قوله تعالى ألف لام تنزيل 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 الكتاب لا ريب فيه من رب العالمين. Based on that he says to step on لا ريب فيه. And then هدى للمتقين في هدى للمتقين. He says that is is the best and it's good to do that. So إن شاء الله تعالى this is a فائدة that Ibn Kathir mentions. Next, inshallah ta'ala, uh, sit bi'idhni Allah al-Kareem, our next uh, session, inshallah, with this book, we will, I will speak about, I will speak about um, what is khabar and what's insha. Lianna usuliyin, when they divide the kalam, they look at the kalam from many angles, one of the i'tibar is madululatihi, what it, shows and they divide it from that angle taqseem al kalami bi atibari madululati they divide it into a khabar and an insha so inshallah ta'ala next session inshallah ta'ala before we go into the next one which is huda lil muttaqin we will go over what is khabar and have a good understanding of what khabar is and insha what is a good understanding of insha we'll do that bi idhnillah kareem next lesson inshallah ta'ala don't forget the shurut of la and nafiya al amila to amala laysa the conditions that are stipulated by the grammarians if you can bring them i will inshallah ta'ala make sure that i look at it bidni lillahi kareem subhanakallahumma bihamdik ashhadu an la ilaha illallah astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk